Now uh, let's return to our uh, example in uh, in our Excel. Let me share with you the screen. Uh, share, 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 and here we. I uh, know not this one actually. I don't want to share this one. I want to share the the other one. So this is um, this one. Uh, you can see the Excel now, right? Yes, I can see, sir. Okay, so if we now assume that this cost of, uh, and then let's just let's put some year, year one, year two, year three, etc., etc., right? And there'll be like year five. And let's say that this cost is equal, for example, like what? Can someone? Uh, then the, the the cost is equal, let's say, two percent. I don't know. Just imagine numbers, right? Three percent. Again, three percent. Um, and here, let's say, four percent. And here again, three three percent, right? So if we just assume like this, and let's assume that. Uh, the proportion will be more or less also stable, so it will be 30%. Here will be like again 25%, and here will be let's say 32%. And the cost of bond would be maybe uh, well exactly the same, but let's make it like let's say uh, 2.5. Let's make it uh, here uh, also 2.5. Let's make it here four. Let's make it here five and let's make it here two. So if in this kind of situation, right, if we have like that, we can calculate what is the the cost of the uh, if we multiply two percent times thirty three percent plus this times this, then the average cost is is this one. This is the average 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 cost of uh, long term debt right this would be this would be our uh, in a given year in the year number two in the year number two three and so on right so this is this is how does it look you can make a graph from that right you can make the graph you can see uh, how does it look uh, and then we can calculate the average from this five years and we can say that on average the cost of equity is this number so this would be our sorry cost of debt. Cost of debt is this number. Just you need to what you need to do is just be sure what is the proportions of those uh, credit banks and what are the costs. So this data in 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 yellow here you need to calculate. You know this data in yellow you need to calculate. All right. With your company, with the real data of your company, like this way. And let's assume that we have this uh, this debt now. I mean, we cost of the debt we have already. Now, small remark here are ready for the future that I will be uh, t telling in the in the future. If we this is from the we are of course basing here on our uh, uh, those values is like it has 200 million and it's 200. I just assume this 200 and 100, right? Those values remember that those are the the not market values, but they are the counting values. I prefer you would use the market values. Only if there would be like a problematic you couldn't find or something, then of course, of course, you can just like choose the the these values from the you know book values anyway, without even trying to find the market values, because it is easier, but it doesn't mean that it's better. The same for your grade. You know, for me it's easy to give you a zero percent then. 70%. It's easy because 0% is like, you know, one number only, right? Then 70. Okay, so the more you work you put into the report, the, of course, the better grade you will have, which is uh, should be encouraging and it's, it should be obvious. Uh, now, you need to also remember about uh, another kind of terminology that is called uh, tax, uh, tax shield. tax shield, right? You need to remember about this because the interest that company pays 
whatever if they are interest from the credit or loan or they are interest from the bond, those interest for the company, this is a cost. This is a cost of the company. So this cost, this interest, their value lower the company gross profit. The gross profit is lower because before the gross profit, you need to discount all the costs, right? The financial cost and the operational cost. And the financial cost exactly would be the interests. So because of that, if you have your gross profit is lower than it wouldn't be, if you wouldn't have the, the debt, then you would pay less taxes because that's because of that, right? You have higher costs, you have less gross profit, you pay the, the, the tax, sorry, tax rate is applied to lower, uh, is applied to lower gross profit and therefore you pay the less taxes and you have a higher net income if you wouldn't have the, the, the credits, right? So for, for the company point of view, if we assume that the tax rate, tax rate is equal, let's assume 20%. So this 3.5, 15% is not a real cost for the company. The real cost of the company will be lower and will be lower exactly by the tax rate. So the tax rate adjusted, tax rate adjusted cost of uh, long term, long term debt in short period of time, in short, short time horizon, right? Because now we're talking about the short, short uh, term horizon, right? So because uh, why? Because it's only the five years, five years, five past years, this data is historically, right? So we can assume that if historically it was like that, maybe for the next five years, for this year, you need to make a forecast. For the next five years, it will be the same as it was in the past five years. This is short term. So this would be uh, uh, this number times one minus tax rate. So in other words, this would be this number. And just for you, uh, this, this is equal to uh, cost of this uh, uh, debt, long term debt, times 1 minus T, and the T is the tax rate. Of course, this everything that I'm writing here is in the book, so I'm just writing here more for you to understanding than for uh, you know remembering it currently now okay this is just uh, this is the formula cost of the debt times uh, one minus t very simple one uh, and if you apply it then the real cost for the company will be instead of 315 it's 252 because the rest this 20 percent is just saved on the taxes that the company pays taxes that are lower by some amount so the net effective rate is this of course, there is something like all that is effective tax rate uh, because this tax rate, which one tax rate to apply? This one that is official in the in the in the country, for example, the country has the tax rate that is equal twenty percent, or this one that is uh, from the company statements. You see, so it all depends. Uh, I would use the effective rate from the country because in the long term, company cannot avoid taxes forever. It it will once time or another, well, it will get to it. Uh, okay, so so this is that. So we currently finish this part that is related to the cost of debt, and this is in the short term, cost of debt, right? In the short, so this is the, of course, we are talking about the long-term debt. So long-term debt in the just, this is like, well, it's exactly written here, long-term debt in the short time horizon, right? Now we can calculate also the long term debt in the long term horizon. And this long term uh, horizon would be something that is not five years, but it's like 20 years. And how it would be, what you could, uh, what kind of knowledge you could apply to calculate it well for your report for your company. If you would go back to this, uh, if you would go back to this uh, Stocko website, that shows us what is in the previous 20 years and this 20 years is the long period of time. Everybody see this? This is a graph. 
Oh, no, no, you don't see because I don't share with you, right? So I will share it with you. Now you can see. Yes. So this is the graph of, of the previous 20 years of this LIBOR, right? And remember that LIBOR was the interest rates between the banks. If you add to this LIBOR margin, you can have uh, some kind of approximation of what is the cost of the loans slash credits for the companies, right? So you see, in the past 20 years, this LIBOR was between 5.5% to 0.2%. So that's a very big variation. And now if you would assume that the last period of time, which is this, this year is here, from 2000 to 2021, uh, this 20, uh, sorry, it's this is like I think 2010, uh, yeah, it's this year, this is the year, 2020 is here. So this is 21. This last five years even, you would see that those, this is the rates, right? Of course, if you put it even longer perspective, like 30 years, you will see how it looks like that. If you would from it maximum, it looks like that. Okay, so we don't know actually. I mean, we, we, we can assume that we don't know because from this rate, we don't see any kind of like what could be like low in the future or be high in the future. It was 5%, here is 7%, here is 8, here is even 10. What's in 80s, it was 10%. The banks borrowed each other by 10%, right? Here is 7, here is 6, uh, here is 3. Uh, here is 0 0.2, here is 1, you know, we don't know. We don't know what is the correct, in a quotation, correct one. But we know one thing. What is the expectation of the Central Bank of United States, called also Fed, Federal Reserve, regarding inflation? And does those expectations regarding inflation matter, or it doesn't matter what this bank said, saying? So first, maybe the question, the second part of the question, does it matter what Fed says? For the markets. Or it's just like you can ignore it totally. Can someone answer? Sure. Yes, it matters. Yes, rather I think that almost of you probably think that yes, it matters because it's like the bank that can print dollars and only one bank in the world can print dollars, right? This one. So it's quite important what they say. Now, do you know what is their expectations for the long term inflation? Anyone? Isn't it connected with like politics also? In a sense that we, we can't actually, I mean, straight away just give you the number probably mm, no there is a, a, a long-term goal that federal reserve is always trying to keep maintain there is like that's number they they have they it's called this policy of the central bank is called inflation targeting it's used from 90s every bank has this in poland we also have it i'm just asking if you know what is this rate central bank european like central bank excuse me like three percent or something like healthy level of inflation yeah it would be rather two percent from other if you would just write in google uh fed uh, inflation target uh this is i don't know this is actually can be from whatever size but it's let's say google but you can find it in the official it's you can find it in official documents of the uh, of the, you know, uh, Fed on the website. Yeah, so, but here you have the BBC, here this, you have this Wikipedia, here has some something from the, uh, exactly in Wikipedia, but Ben Char uh, Barnenke was uh, quoted. Uh, here you have the, from the, I don't know, another website, but you can find it also on the, on the Reuters website. Uh, here is the website of some another one, like some educational. Pro anyway, it's two percent. Okay. In Poland, this inflation targeting is two and a half percent plus minus one. So there is some kind of a, a, a corridor, some kind of a um, uh, range from which this inflation can be, uh, be how it can behave. 
right? So for Federal Reserve, US is 2%. And probably they also can say like, ah, oh, plus minus half percent or one you know, percent up and down, it's like acceptable. In Poland, they say it exactly two and a half plus minus one percent. It's acceptable. And of course, we could check. And now this, this rate here, this LIBOR rate, they are not showing the inflation rate, right? They are not showing the inflation. We could have the inflation rate showed here. If we would write CPI, let's assume this would be a measure of US. And this is from maybe too long perspective, 50 years. Uh, maybe 30 years just to have the same period. I don't know this is from 90. You see, this is the this is the inflation because you know from 90s they start targeting. And here is this two percent. You see this two percent this line. It's more or less the inflation. If the, of course sometimes it's because they cannot control perfectly everything, but it's like if you take the average from let's say from the beginning, middle, middle of 90s because then it was this inflation targeting started, then you would see that there was there is some average and to this average probably quite close to 2%. Even from this graph, you can see it, that the usually what is above it's below 2%. It's like 2 plus 2, maybe here is a 5, so 2 plus 3 and here is minimum uh, minus 2. So it's like here is like 1, 2, 3, 4 and here is like 1, 2, 3, maybe 4. So plus minus 4% this is the maximum, the biggest and there's very few times it just happened here and here. Usually it's, it's somewhere between this, this range. Like you would see most of this line is somewhere between one and three percent. Most of these lines for during the previous 30 years. So this is inflation targeting and this we know and this is what the set, Fed said and that's it. And this is a powerful information for us because why? If we assume that the policy uh, of this, uh, because those are the market rates. Okay, we, we could also put here some kind of like, uh, let's say, 10, uh, 10 year United States bonds, or maybe if they have some one year, no, they have only, it seems that this in this portal is only 10 or oh, two years. If you would put two years uh, bonds in United States, we have a similar graph to this uh, LIBOR. You know, just put your LIBOR here again. LIBOR, if I would just show you this again on the same graph, then you would see that they are moving almost identically. You know, the correlation is very high. Sometimes the levels are different, but the, the, the way on from which they oh, see, for example, this is this divergence here is going down, here is going up, but here is going down and here is going up. So this is some divergences. But generally, you see, even in the longer, I think there will be no longer period of time. I oh, know there is. In a long period of time, they are going pretty the same because both are showing the same. So it's not important if I'm showing you LIBOR or if I'm showing you the US Treasury bonds. They are having the same uh, the same kind of uh, uh, movements. Okay, so let's keep in this uh, let's keep in this LIBOR for one year. <coughs> I'm sorry. So this is the the LIBOR. And of course, the difference between the CPI, the difference between inflation rates and the LIBOR rates or some kind of a, a bonds rates, generally market rates, if you call them market rates, it's not important if it will be the treasury bonds or LIBOR, but the difference between that is, of course, the real interest rate. The real one is the, you know, inflation, the inflation adjusted interest rates, right? The, the really how much money you save from given unit of money, right? Real interest rate. And if we can assume, which is quite a smart assumption, that in the long period of time, this rate needs to be positive. It cannot be like government makes uh, like people just poorer with time, because if these rates like currently, they are negative. So it means that the inflation is higher than the, the rates that you received from the bank deposits or from the, or you receive it from the, uh, if you receive it from the uh, bonds, interest, right, the yields of bonds. If, if those rates are lower, it means that you are losing money, losing money all the time because they have negative interest rates a real interest rates. So of course, in a, a, a normal economy and a normal assumption would be that this rate at least needs to be zero, at least to not to lose money. 
of course, for some period of time can be below, sometimes it can be above, but we rather assume that there will be in the longer period of time, there would be rather uh, above than below because the government doesn't want to have a high inflation. Uh, if you see here the CPI in the previous 50 years, you see that in the 80s and 70s, inflation in the United States was going, this was the period of kind of manipulation of the monetary base. So the inflation was 14%, you know, 14%, 6% was the inflation. So imagine in 80s, right? Let's say, or, or 90s, inflation was between, uh, let's say, 2 and 6. What was the interest rate in 90s? The interest rate were between, let's say, this, what is this number? Let's say 3 to 7, something like that, right? I don't know how is the scale, and it would have to check. In the 90s, it was like the, let's say, almost 10, to the lowest was probably something like four. So 10 and four, ver sorry, 10 and four versus uh, inflation in 90s, uh, six and uh, and two, right? So for some period of time, maybe there was a negative interest rate, but for the longer period of time, usually they should be positive to encourage people for savings, to not discourage them from uh, savings and, and, and generally, you know, part being participants of the financial markets. So if we assume this, and then we know that the uh, Fed wants to keep the interest rates, uh, sorry, the inflation rate above ab about 2% two per, two percent per year in the long term, and long term is like 20, 30, 50 years, right? So we can assume that the interest rates that will be during this 20, 30 period of time, which is much longer, right, long term period, uh, the rates, they will be also at least 2% because it needs to be needs to be at least what is the interest rate from the uh, sorry what is the, the the what is lost by inflation right this would be correct assumption so what we can what we know now about the long term long term cost of or maybe like that cost of long term debt cost of long term debt in long time horizon. Uh, right, so in the long time horizon, we have this uh, uh, cause of debt that is long term cost of debt, right? Uh, so we in general, we talk always about the long term debt because we are not interested in the short term current liabilities. We are non current. Uh, sorry, uh, we are not. Yeah, we need non-current liabilities, right? So, in other words, long-term debt, and this long-term debt in the horizon needs to be minimum equal to the expected inflation. So, minimum, right? Why minimum? Because if this is equal to the expected inflation, then we assume that people agree to have zero and be more or more even, we're talking now about the debt of the companies and company, even Microsoft, is a much riskier than the, the United States. United States government can issue the bonds that are just above, just a bit above inflation or just equal inflation or sometimes even below inflation because it's the government. They have army, they have own the state, right? This is the state. Unfortunately, it's like in feudalism, the kings. So it's like that. They are the kings, right? We are the peasants. So it's working like this. Now, in the if we are talking about the companies, they have much more uh, risky. They are much more risky than the, than the government of the United States. Even big companies like Microsoft or Tesla or whatever, right? So this is why they would have to pay some kind of margin, some kind of addition, and the same margin as is paid here for the banks over the 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 the, the LIBOR, right? Is a LIBOR plus margin. The same here be some uh, at least equal to the expected inflation plus some kind of margin. Now, what kind of margin maybe is worth to check historically? We could check historically what is this margin? How much is the bonds? A quotation of the bonds of some kind of a company. Uh, Let me check uh, T, not to be treasury, but T bonds yields. Uh -huh, uh, corporate, oh, issues, I bond term corporate 
ETF. So this is some kind of ETF that has, but there is no data, just great. Uh, short long term data we would need to have. So um, long term uh, bonds, corporate bonds yields. Yields. Let's try to find it. There is some kind of chart. Right, let's check. This is a, this is some kind of a more decision at a corporate bond deal. So this is like a AAA. This is this uh, grade grade of this bonds. The, this is a very good bonds, a good quality bonds. And those are their ratings. And we can observe this. Uh, of course, we cannot observe it. We cannot. Five years, not at least in 10 years is already. No, so in five years they are looking like that. And if this graph would be nice, because of course here we have the data even, right? If this graph would be nice, maybe interactive would be nice. But there is okay, and everything is paid, unfortunately. Not everything, of course. We can find this in other kind of a, um, in other kind of a um, data sets, right? It doesn't have to be here. Here we have, oh, for example, 30 years high quality mortgage. Uh, no, corporate market, corporate bond spot rate, and then you can choose use 10 years maximum and so on. The the nice thing would be if we would can edit the graph and add add oh uh, we could add uh, we could add uh, maybe inflation maybe CPI consumer price index for all urban okay let's whatever any kind of consumer consumer this and we add it to this graph and uh, let's see what happened nothing happened <laughs> maybe in five years period will be something because i don't see this here but and would be nice to show you right because then the difference would be exactly this margin we would see how much the 30 years bond of high quality are over the inflation right unfortunately uh, i don't know what needs to be clicked to be to be visible on this graph because that's it you know i don't want to i think in uh, uh, we can do it on YouTube on, uh, on we can do it on uh, Yahoo Finance. Maybe this uh, maybe this codes will be working there. Uh, because we would have to find some kind of exactly uh, bonds. Oh. PIM Coactive Bond Exchange Trade Fund. Let's say there. We have some kind of an exchange uh, exchange uh, fund, right? We hope that they're corporate bonds. Uh, but this is the prices, not the yields. We see this is, oh no, yeah, those are the prices because this. And if you add to this graph uh, comparison, and if you add to this comparison of the uh, CPI inflation, Now they will not have inflation. Yeah. Excuse me. Ah, you don't you don't see this still. OK, 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 I will just show you. So what I wanted to what I try to show you. Um, What I want to show you is the. Where is the. Here. Uh, is trying to show you on the graph what is the, the this margin that I was telling you. So difference. So here we have some kind of a, a bonds index, and this 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 is the other index that represents some kind of let's say the inflation. So this is the inflation. This is the bond. Sorry, this is the bond index. This is the inflation. And the, but the problem is here that you see this is in the percentage, and I think this is in the uh, everything is in the prices instead of the instead or in in the percentage, right? So they are just showing the difference, but it's the difference percentage of price. But the price, of course, they assume that it's they are starting from 100 both. So it's some kind of approximation of this margin. So this margin, the difference between the 
uh, inflation rate and the the bonds of the corporate government uh, corporate bonds not the government but the corporate bonds is it has some margin is like one percent difference or two we can say this in the different kind of period of time sometimes this margin gets very big sometimes very small see so this is called spread so this spread between those uh, uh, if we would know this margin this spread we could easily put it here because this margin that I'm talking now, uh, let me again change the screen. Um, the margin that I'm talking about is exactly this from this equation that you have just seen, not this one. Ah, it's too many files open, but unfortunately to show you everything, all of them needs to be open. So this, this is the margin that I'm talking about, this one. Right, so this is the expected inflation plus margin. If we would know this margin in the history how it was, we would take some average. So in other words, if we assume that on average in the history, in the less, less than, let's say, 20 years, the margin above the inflation was uh, 1%, then we know that the expected inflation is equal, is equal 2%, so 2%, this is the expected expected inflation, and we add to this some margin that let's assume that is one percent margin or the spread spread above inflation. So in other words, is a difference, difference between the bonds, corporate bonds, and inflation. So if this difference is equal to be 1%, then we can expect that long-term debt needs to be at least 3%. Right, because two percent is the inflation, and one percent market requires above the inflation to just borrow the money for these companies. Then it's three percent. So the long-term cost of debt needs to be at least three percent, and this is something that you need to write down and assume. In I mean, because this is the experimental. This is why there is a question. The question marks here. You need to find it. It's not that I'm, I'm going to find it for you. This is your work because maybe each company has different margin. Right, because some of them are more risky, some are less risky. Tesla, because it's big, maybe not Tesla, but let's say Microsoft or the AT&T, big companies. These are much, much lower margin, much lower risk than some kind of small companies. So this is your, this is your, your task to find this, this data. How much is it? One percent, half percent, or or twenty percent? Okay, it's your task to do it, and then you will have this, uh, you will have this uh, answer for, for this part of your report. Now let me ch check how much is time for the classes. Actually the class is finishing so it's not worth to start the new part. Next class, next class I would uh, like to discuss with you and I will send you the presentation about the cost of equity. I mean you will watch it during the class then I will be discussing with you some of these parts but I would like you to be ready and have this kind of Excel that I'm having here for you, right? You need to manage to get this data about the balance sheet, about the income, because it will be later income statement important, uh, the uh, cash flow statement, it will be important. You need to get this information from the overall, I can say generally internet. In the internet, you can copy it from, I don't know, some websites, you can uh, just you need to quote the source, because this is the, you know, this saying, trash in, trash out. If you will, your data that you put in to your project, to your your models, your projects will be trash. You will have a trash result, and then you will have a trash grade. Uh, so the quality of the data data is very important. So you need to care about this. Now you have the whole week to prepare the data. I formally will write it as a homework. Homework deadline next Tuesday is uh, 16 of March. So 16. 2021 prepare all financial data related to 
selected company. Your selected company, of course. Uh, year company, and it will be yearly for minimum five years uh, past, right? So you need to find it uh, for the minimum five years in the past. This is the homework for the next time. And the more you ignore the homework, the more you are not present on the classes, you are like uh, not participating in these lectures or in these meetings, you will not be active with your Excels in the next classes, you will not make the homeworks, there will be a big, big problems for you to pass this whole subject, the whole course. You need to remember this, not be because if you get lazy uh, at the beginning, it will be very, very hard to get back to work and get back to have a good grade from the whole project because it's a complex issue. It's not a simple thing. If it will be simple, everybody would make fortunes on the stock market, but it's not. Not everybody are Warren Buffett, right? Or Bill Gates or some investors, famous investors. Um, OK, do you have any questions for what we just uh, said, discussed? Do you understand the homework? Everything is clear. Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay, so in this case, uh, because we didn't have the break, so this will be uh, we'll be finishing the class a bit earlier, and uh, I encourage you to do this homework, and of course read also the book, and we see each other in next uh, uh, Tuesday. So thank you very much. Have a good day and have, have a good week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Bye bye. Bye.